One of the biggest mistakes that you can make, especially when you're just getting started with intermittent fasting, is not getting enough salt and other minerals. And I know, I know everyone's telling you that you should avoid salt because of high blood pressure. But when you do intermittent fasting for a prolonged period of time, you're actually losing more salt, more potassium and more magnesium in your urine. And if you're not replacing these minerals in some form, you're going to feel terrible. You'll feel nauseous, you might vomit, you'll have headaches, you may have muscle cramps and muscle weakness, you may feel very, very dizzy, especially when you stand up, you may have low blood pressure, and you'll feel restless and irritable. Now, to solve this problem, you don't have to rush to buy supplements. You can actually eat lots of natural food that has magnesium, potassium, and then add a little bit of salt to those foods. You can eat more nuts like almonds, Brazil nuts, and cashews, though they are a little bit higher in carbs than the rest of them. You can eat more seeds like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds. Eat more fatty fish like mackerel, tuna, salmon, sardines, and then eat lots and lots of dark green leafy vegetables. You can have some bone broth. You can have a little bit of dark chocolate. Avocados are a great source of minerals. Unsweetened yogurt and cheese. If you find that you're still having a lot of muscle cramps, you can add a magnesium supplement. Magnesium glycinate is my favorite because it's effective and it's affordable. It also causes less diarrhea than some of the other types of magnesium. Don't bother with magnesium oxide. That's the waste of your money. So that was tip number seven. Make sure that you're getting extra salt, magnesium and potassium. This next mistake is closely related to the last one. When you do intermittent fasting for a long time, your insulin levels will come down and this will make you lose more water in the form of urine. And when you don't have enough water in your body, you'll feel dizzy, you'll feel weak, and you'll be very irritable. I'm not going to tell you that you have to drink five liters of water every day. That's just over a gallon of water. That's ridiculous. If you're in a very hot climate where you sweat a lot, you're obviously going to have to drink more water than someone who's in Iceland. And the amount of water that you need to drink will change from day to day, depending on what you do during the day. If you exercise and you sweat a lot, then you're going to need to drink more water. If your urine is a light yellow color, then you're probably getting enough water. But if it's a very deep, dark yellow or orange, then the chances are that you're not getting enough water during the day. And of course, you can drink other fluids like unsweetened herbal teas and bone broth. This next mistake is a common one. You might not be eating enough food during your eating window. And especially if you're trying to lose weight, you might feel like eating very small meals will make you lose weight faster. Or if you're trying to lower your blood sugar, you might think that if you eat less food, then your blood sugar will be lower. By fasting, and then eating very small meals during your eating window, you're basically starving yourself. That means that you won't be getting enough vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. So you might keep falling sick and having repeated infections, and colds and coughs, because you're not giving your body what it needs to fight disease. You might not be getting enough healthy fats to make hormones, so your libido may be very low, and your muscles may waste away because you're not eating enough protein. If you find yourself in this position, you may actually have to stop fasting altogether. Go back to eating three normal meals every day and build your body back up. Then when you're feeling better, you can actually go back to the fasting and just get into it slowly and gradually. So that was tip number five. In your eating window, make sure that you're eating enough food to feel satisfied. And then again, you might swing in the exact opposite direction. Seeing as you've been fasting and depriving yourself and suffering, you might feel like when it's time to eat that you should treat yourself. If you're an active 20-something year old 
and you stuff yourself with pizza and other junk food during your eating window, you might get away with it. But if you're in your 40s and above, that might not work. During your eating window, avoid cakes, pies, biscuits, bread, potato chips. I'm not saying that you can never eat these foods, just that they shouldn't form the bulk of your meal. Eat more natural food, but even with that, try and cut down on the starchy foods like plantain, pasta, potatoes, rice, yam, all those. Eat slowly and enjoy the taste of your food. It takes a while for your brain to get the message from your stomach that you're full. If you eat really fast, before the message gets to your brain, you've already eaten too much and you're stuffed. So that's tip number four to get the most out of your fasting. Don't overeat and avoid junk food. When you're doing intermittent fasting, you're generally fasting for maybe 16 hours of the day and eating for eight hours of the day. That's your eating window. And this timing varies depending on what kind of fasting you're doing. People will generally tell you that you can put your eating window any time of the day that you choose. But let's say that you eat a potato. If you eat this potato at night, it will raise your blood sugar more than if you ate the same potato in the morning. That's because you are more insulin resistant at night. So try as much as you can to push your eating window earlier in the day. I know some people who fast regularly and they stop eating by three or four in the afternoon. And that might not be convenient for you, it just might not work. But at least make sure that you're not eating less than three hours before you go to bed. So say you go to bed at 11, then you'd make sure that you don't eat anything after eight. So that was tip number three to get the best from your fasting. Put your eating window earlier in the day. This next tip is so underrated. Did you know that just one night of bad sleep is enough to make you insulin resistant and raise your blood sugar the next day? So you're basically cancelling out all the benefits that you're getting from fasting when you don't get good sleep. If you have problems with sleep, please don't rush to buy supplements. A lot of them eventually do more harm than good. There are lots of free and extremely cheap things that you can do to help your sleep. I've always had sleep problems and all these things I'm going to tell you now are things that I do personally. This may sound really weird, but it works. Go out in the early morning and get 10 to 20 minutes of early morning sunlight. What this does is that it sets your body clock. It tells your brain that in 12 hours time, you should start feeling drowsy and start getting ready for sleep. Don't drink anything that contains caffeine after 12 noon. That includes, of course, coffee. Some teas are very high in caffeine. Soft drinks have caffeine, energy drinks, all those things. Because that caffeine that you're drinking after 12 will still be circulating around in your blood at night, keeping you awake when you're supposed to be going to sleep. Turn down the lights at home in the evening so that your brain knows that it's time to sleep. And then make sure that you've written down everything that you need to do the next day so that your brain isn't struggling staying awake, trying to remember these things when you should be sleeping. Avoid screens one hour before bedtime. That includes iPads, laptops, computers, and of course, phones. I usually plug my phone in far away from my bed so that I'm not tempted to just reach over and check something. Sleep in a dark room or use a sleep mask. Even when your eyelids are closed, dim lights still pass through your eyelids and go to the back of your eyes and then stimulate your brain, which keeps you awake. Lastly, you can add some magnesium glycinates about one hour before bedtime. Please, please avoid sleeping pills as much as possible. It's very easy to become dependent on them and then it becomes very difficult to stop taking them. The other part of this equation is, of course, stress. 
and constant stress that's not relieved in any way is going to raise your blood sugar, raise your blood pressure and make you fatter around your middle. And this extra fat around your middle will make you more insulin resistant, which will in turn raise your blood sugar and raise your blood pressure even higher. So I know that you may not be able to completely remove yourself from the source of your stress because it might be your job, it might even be a person, but you can find ways to relieve it. So doing things that are mechanical in that you don't have to think about them, they're not complex. These help you to process your negative emotions, which can help you manage stress better. Walking, gardening, knitting, throwing punches at a punching bag, all these can help. You just need to find something that works for you. Journaling and actually writing down the things that are bothering you can help you get things off your chest and help you to feel better. Praying, meditating, stretching, yoga, deep breathing, all these can help you cope with stress a little bit better. So that was tip number two to help you get the most out of your intermittent fasting. Get good quality sleep as often as you can and find ways to bring down your stress levels. This is one of the biggest mistakes that makes people give up on fasting and miss out on all its amazing benefits. Well, you might say, well, intermittent fasting is simple. You just don't eat. And yes, that is true. But if you've been used to eating three or more meals a day with lots of snacks in between, if you just jump into fasting, it's going to be a real shock to your body. You're going to feel ravenously hungry. You're going to feel dizzy, sick and exhausted. So I'm going to tell you how you can ease gently into intermittent fasting and avoid all these side effects. And you can do this over three to four weeks. In the first week, just eat all your regular meals. Don't eat any snacks. You don't need them. Most of us snack because we're bored or just out of habits because it's what we've always done. So when you're eating these three meals a day, concentrate on eating enough to satisfy yourself. Make sure you're not hungry when you finish your meal. Eat natural food, not packaged food or junk food eat natural food. Then next up, you need to start reducing the starchy food like rice, potatoes, yam, pasta, plantain. In place of these starchy foods, you'll be eating more protein and more vegetables. Once you're comfortable with this, then you can start shrinking the hours of the day during which you eat. So let's say, for example, you eat between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. You'd start shrinking one hour at a time. So instead of 7 to 7, you can eat at 8 and stop eating at 7. Then eat at 9, stop eating at 7. Then start eating at 10 and stop eating at 7. So you can see that gradually you've been shrinking the number of hours that you eat every day. And you keep doing that one hour at a time making sure that you're comfortable along the way until you get to eight hours of eating and 16 hours of fasting, if that's what you're aiming for. Some people eat for six hours of the day and fast for the remaining 18 hours of the day. And there's one thing that lowers blood sugar better than anything else. And you can find out about that in the next video.